Hi folks, we're back in Cutting Through the Matrix. Yesterday I mentioned an article where the European Food Safety Association for the European Parliament, I guess, had okayed uh, bisphenol A to be put in the baby food and the rest of it because it's all right for you, it's not bad at all. They tried to class that as a protein, that's why they got it in the baby food and they use it as bulk. And so they passed it and I was looking through it again, the same article, and it said, normally the, 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 the British Plastics Federation and the European Plastics Federation, uh, the, the big manufacturers generally do the testing themselves and hand it to the European Union to review. And this, this may have been the same case, I don't know. Anyway, it says here uh, that uh, certain intakes are okay, etc. And it says they couldn't identify any new evidence which would lead them to revise the current tolerable daily intake for BPA of 0.05 milligrams per kilogram body weight set by the EFCA SA in 2006. It says uh, the review also highlighted that data currently available does not provide convincing evidence of neurobehavioral toxicity of BPA. Very clever, very, very clever, because you see, the people were not asking for neurobehavioral toxicity tests at all. It was all to do with the fact that mothers who used it, which are pregnant, and it's in makeup, it's in everything, um, and then again at the bottle when the child is born, uh, if it's a male, it tends to make his testes rather small. And in fact, in the womb, in the fourth, I think the 12th to the 14th week or something, or the 8th to the 12th week, um, it would make sure they were pretty well sterile for life. That's what it was about. So they should have done a biological study on it and to see how this would affect uh, the male child's hormone output later in life. Uh, not a neurobehavioral uh, change, uh, like picking flowers and stuff. So that wasn't the intent of the study at all that was cried for. But that's how they do it. And this study is supposed to put people's uh, minds at ease. That's what they say. Up your mind at ease. Well, I guess guys who are sterilized that way, it's kind of neutered, um, are pretty passive. Uh, there's no testosterone there. So maybe technically that will happen. That part's true. But then you go into the daily after that was published, and here is this article here. Uh, it says here, gender bending chemicals in plastics that raises the risk of prostate cancer. That's on top of the fact you'll be sterile. So guys are really had it here. This is the 7th of October 2010. A gender bending chemical found in babies' bottles may raise the odds of prostate cancer in later life, scientists have warned. In experiments, newborn rats fed bisphenol A, a building block of many commonly used plastics, were more likely to develop precancerous cells as they aged. Uh, with chemical levels similar to those commonly found in the human body, the researchers said their findings are directly relevant to babies' health. Their warnings came just a week after the European food watchdog said that the amounts of the chemical we are exposed to in day-to-day -day life are too low to do any harm. I'd add to the, to the food, I suppose. The Food Standards Agency also said that bisphenol A does not carry a risk, but the latest study raises the fresh concerns about the compound, which is also found in CD cases, tin can linings. Why would they put it in tin can linings? They never used to. Let's to make sure you get your bisphenol A, folks. Even beer cans, I understand. The sunglasses, plastic knives and forks, mobile phones and dental sealants. Huh, that's interesting. The American researchers showed that giving newborn rats the chemical raised their odds of developing cellular damage that can lead to prostate cancer in later life. Both mouth dro drops, uh, drops and injections were equally damaging. So orally or by injection were just the same. University of Illinois researcher Gail Prince said there was no difference in the number of lesions where the bisphenol A was given by injection or orally the prostate pathology was the same. It mattered nothing which way it was given. This is important because in many previous studies which have focused on jabs have been criticized for not being true to life and the results downplayed. The latest research suggests that damage seen in such experiments also occurs when we exit through food and drink. Bisphenol A has previously been linked to fertility problems, breast cancer, uh, prostate cancer and heart attacks. Writing in the journal Reproductive Toxicology, Dr. Prince said these findings on prostate health are directly relevant to humans at current bisphenol A exposure levels, which the European Commission found were acceptable, the same levels were acceptable. 
It says, these findings support the proposal that exposure to bisphenol A uh, during fetal and non-natal life may increase the, the risk of carcinogenic events during adult life and in the human population. So in the womb, and just after I come out of the womb, um, you're pretty well done for a guess. Elizabeth Salter Green at the Chemicals, Health and Environment Monitoring Trust said, responsible governments need to find alternatives to bisphenol A as so many consumer products are made using this chemical and we're all constantly exposed. Campaigners say that those concerned about the chemical should use bisphenol A free baby bottles, cut down on the use of canned foods and opt for glass, porcelain or stainless steel containers where possible. They should also stop plastering on that makeup that contains it as well when they're pregnant because it goes through the skin. Uh, insufflation, they call it through the skin. They should also avoid eating foods, including baby meals and polycarbonate plastic food containers, often marked with a 7 on the bottom, as a chemical can leak out of the plastic at high temperature. But the prostate cancer charity urged people not to worry, the charity organization also, saying that bisphenol A breaks down much more quickly in the human body than in a rat. So they're, they're saying don't worry about it, just keep your money throwing at them. Dr. Kate Holmes of the charity says this is a field research that remains highly controversial. Bisphenol A is still considered to be a safe product for use by the food industry. Well, that's, they're all for money, right? So we can trust them. And the exposure of humans to this product is considered to be minimal by the same uh, food companies, you see. So anyone's got a bit of common sense, they will take the precautions and, and stop using the stuff altogether in their food for sure. And if you want a healthy baby, uh, then, you know, to avoid it altogether in all of its forms. That's all you can see about that.